Hello and welcome to another video. This is, uh, yes, this video is a sad farewell to an old mate. No, not this old mate. This old mate. This is uh, Acer Chromebook I've had for a couple of years and I'm finding I need to do more and more sort of dev stuff on it and use it for um cloud gaming and the chrome os is really really not up to it um a lot of stuff i have to run in a console in a, in a shell terminal and um, with the chrome os it uses a docker container which is sort of like a virtual machine inside it so you're not really addressing the hardware directly and when you want to you know compile and run code or other things and that it's one layer removed from talking directly with the hardware so yeah it's just laggy so what we're going to do today is try and install um, a new os on it but before we even do anything because it's early on a saturday we need this Yep, it was a long day yesterday, eight hours work, made a quick cooking video and then did a YouTube live stream. But I'm in desperate need of this today. Uh, yeah, also as a side, um, I've been trying to get a couple of tickets for Oasis reunion concert and um, yeah, I've been on Ticketmaster for an hour and now look, I'm now 276,000th in the queue. Unbelievable. Unbelievable. Right. Yeah. Yeah, I know. Yeah, yeah, I know what you're thinking. Yeah, yeah. Why are you bothering with them? They probably beat each other up and split up before the tour starts. Well, you know, I did like them back in the sort of late 90s and early 2000s. So um, at least they play instruments, yeah? Well, one of them does. Um, okay, yeah, so back to the topic in hand. Let me plug the laptop in the capture device and I'll show you what I mean. Right, okay, here we are then. Um, so the things like web browsing and uh, YouTube and that, it's fine. But if we want to do any dev work, then um, I have to use... This terminal here, which runs in a almost like a virtual machine, okay, and to use like um, a, a code editor like Visual Code, I have to install it inside this container, and then run it on an X server. So if we go to our apps, yeah, see, look, we've got Linux apps here, and we've got uh, Visual Studio Code here, and these are my emulators. And there's Vim, etc. And it is just so slow. I mean, I'm loading VS Code up now. Runs in an X server, see? <sighs> so this is it. It's only just loaded, yeah? It is slow as hell. Okay, and if I, you know, I want to play uh, any games on my remote, I have to do that inside an app inside here. So that there's lag. Uh, yeah, it, it, it ain't good. Okay, this is just a blackjack program I've written in C++ just to test things out. But look, it's scrolling, it's slow. Uh, well, there's a, I'm on a terminal so I can build it. Um... I don't know what changes I've made on here. Okay. Let's try and run it. That's the part of it. Yeah. Um, 
There we go. See, I've got an out of date version of the app on here anyway. So either way, it it, it ain't good. It's slow. Um, I wrote a little game in Python, a balloon, crazy balloon clone, and that which uses full screen graphics that ran absolutely terribly on this. Um, so I thought putting a new operating system on, uh, like Linux or something, will allow me to run a hell of a lot more on it because it's not a bad spec, it's an Intel Pentium Silver, um, 128 gig drive on it. Um, a reasonable amount of RAM. I'm not sure exactly how much I've got on here, but um, it's been a while. Probably about eight gig or, or four, even four gig, but that'd be enough to run Debian. So what we're going to do, as it's running Chromium OS and is very very protected, we're going to have to flash a um, custom firmware onto it, um, which is called Crultrabook. But it's not quite as straightforward as uh, as you'd think. It's not like flashing your BIOS with your PC motherboard. No, it's a bit more difficult than that. And uh, there's lots of write protection uh, built into the thing. So this is what we're going to uh, try and overcome. Uh, luckily, there's some uh, good tools out there um, which will make life quite easy for us. So I'm going to switch to the uh, external um, camera because I'm going to be rebooting this a few times and showing you exactly what I'm doing. Okay, so first thing we need to do with this is to put it into developer mode. So we shut it down. This will wipe everything off, off of this completely. Um, everything I've got is backed up on here to either um, GitLab or my Google Drive. Okay. So what we do, we hit escape, uh, refresh, which is that one, hold those two down and power it on. Okay, and we get this here. Um, what we see here, down here, this is droid, which we need to make a note of. This is the motherboard type. Okay, so I think here we do control D. And this will turn OS verification off and we press enter. This will reboot. It will wipe itself. So there we go, it's done. And we do control D again. We have to do this every time we boot up at the moment. So this is going to set itself up in developer mode. Okay, so it's transitioning to developer mode. Uh, this will take about 10 minutes or so. So I will jump cut to when this is done and set up and we can log back in and carry on with the setup. Okay, right, as you can see, uh, we've now um, restored and logged back in. The device is in developer mode, which means we, we've got a few more admin privileges on it than we have normally. Uh, however, uh, in order to flash the firmware with our custom firmware, um, we've got to disable um, write protection on the device. Now, th this can vary from device to device. Um, for this particular Chromebook, all we need to do is disconnect the battery. That's uh, it's fairly simple. Some of them you need to uh, uh, take a screw out or um, bridge a jumper on the motherboard, um, all of which are fairly easy, but this is by far the easiest. Um, so that's what we're going to do. We're going to um, just pop it open and disconnect the battery. Uh, one thing I will say from looking at the documentation for this um, this uh, custom firmware is at the moment, the time of recording, it only works on um, Intel X64 architecture processors, so no ARM processors at all. So if you've got a um, Chromebook with an ARM, processor in um yeah you, this will not work for you okay uh this one's intel so we're all right uh so let's get her open and uh disconnect the battery all right battery disconnection for this one it's just a case of uh undoing all these screws Okay, screws all undone. 
let's see if we can get this off. Is there a simple way to do it? Probably not. Oh, yes, there is. Okay, so here we go. Uh, here's the battery. So it looks like it just goes here. That's the Wi Fi there. Um, wonder where the uh, storage is. wonder if that's replaceable. Maybe it's an M2 or something like that. Right, okay, well, we'll worry about that later. So, peel that back. Gently tease that out, and we'll cover that back up. Okay, we'll just leave that there for now on the tape so it's not shorting anything. Okay, so the battery I think comes out this way if we want to take it out. Yeah, storage is not over there, so no idea where that is. I'm sure we can find it. If it's not soldered on the board, right. Anyway, so battery's disconnected. Let's just pop this back on. We won't screw it in, but we'll just put it on to stop everything falling out. Okay, and we will crack on with the next part of this. Okay, so we are all booted up now with uh, on the AC with the battery disconnected, so we should not have any right protect issues. Uh, what we need to do now is go into the um, uh, VT2 shell, which is only available through developer mode, which gives us full admin privileges. Um, so the way we do that is do Control Alt and this right arrow here, which is like F2. Okay, hopefully we can see that because I can't really zoom in anymore. Okay, so we log in as Kronos. This should be the same on pretty much all devices. Okay, and it should not ask us for a password. Okay, so the script we need to run is is, is, is a one-liner. It's a series of three commands. So CD colon, which CD puts us in our home directory. Colon means um, is, separates the commands. So curl, which is uh, like a, a, a web request, minus L O. Okay, so it follows links and it will output what it's doing, output what it receives into a file. Okay, so it's Mr. Chrome Box dot tech forward slash firmware util dot sh dash util. SH. Okay, so it will download that file. Then we separate the next command with a couple of ampersands because we've got to wait for a bit. Then we use sudo because that means run the next command with admin privileges. sudo bash, which is our shell, which basically means run the command. firmware dash util dot sh. So it will. Go to the home directory, download the file, then run the file with admin privileges. Okay, so if I haven't made any typos and we hit enter. Okay, we can see it's uh, running, it's downloaded and it's running the script. It's getting the device info. Okay, I apologise for the size of the font, there's not really much I can do about this. So you can see there we've got some options. Let's see if I can zoom in a little bit. Okay, so what we want to do is we want option number two. We want to install the full UEFI firmware because we're not going to dual boot this. So we hit number two. Okay. Do you want to continue? Yeah, it's going to go all, who wants to be a millionaire on us? Final answer, blah, blah, blah. Then it tells us the risk that we can brick it. So we'll type I accept there. Okay, after flashing the UEFI firmware, you'll need to install a UEFI compatible OS. Chrome OS will no longer be bootable. Why to continue? Right. 
Right, connect the USB device to store the firmware backup. Well, I'm not too fussed about doing that because I've already got a copy of my firmware backup. So I hit enter. Oh, it seems like we have to do it. Okay, I will jump cut and um, format a USB stick. Okay, so quickly formatted a USB stick. I'm going to be using that for putting uh, Debian on in a bit. But for now, this requires it. So it wants to back up the existing firmware. That's fine. So it's device one. That's God, that was quick. Okay, let's remove it. Press enter. Okay, so this has downloaded the firmware for this uh, particular uh, motherboard. Okay, now it's installing. Okay, this could take some time. Uh, so I'll jump cut to when it is done. Okay, so it is now flashed. It says the first boot after flashing may take substantially longer than subsequent boots, up to 30 seconds or more. Be patient and eventually your device will boot. So hit enter. Okay. So now we're back up to the original menu here. So we will hit R to reboot. Okay. It looks like it's booted. Obviously, we uh, can't do anything here because we've got no OS, so it goes just goes into the UEFI shell. Well, we can turn it on, turn it off, and turn it on again. And this is our new new uh, sort of UEFI BIOS now. So uh, the next thing to do is get our OS onto it. Okay, our Debian uh, install disk. USB is uh, inserted so we will hit escape here and we'll go to the boot menu and we'll do the USB and here is the Debian install screen okay right well I'm, I'm not gonna sort of uh, record me installing Debian I've done it on other videos um, so we will come back when Debian is installed with all the standard options right here we are, Debian is installed. Uh, off camera, I um, reconnected the battery. Um, so you don't want to see me just put in like eight screws, having watched me undo them all. Um, and uh, yeah, I've had to go for a second cup of coffee. Okay, so Debian is now installed. Right, we've got to do a few things first. We've got no sound. Uh, which is a known issue, so we're going to fix that. Okay, battery's in, um, 86%, which is good. Um, so first thing, I use Google Chrome. I don't use Firefox. I, I do, do use Firefox, but just to download Chrome. So first thing we will do is... Oh, don't, really don't want to... Uh, sign in on Chrome on Firefox so uh, let's uh, download Chrome now this should detect that we're running uh, a Debian based system there we go 64 bit deb so we can use our package manager to install that okay so while that's downloading we will um, load the uh, command shell Okay, let's just get some preferences going. Uh, manage profiles. I quite like the color scheme as it is, but let's just do a new one because that's read only. Profile one. Can't use the usual appearance. Um, oh, I like to have a bit of uh, transparency, just a little bit. Maybe we'll have that seven percent. We'll okay that. Okay that. Okay, and we'll use profile one, and we'll okay that. 
there we go we do have a little bit of transparency there hopefully if not it doesn't matter uh, i can sort that out in a bit okay so uh i do not have any admin privileges on this i'm using a standard user so i need to um add myself to the sudo group so i can um, run commands with administration rights um i think i'll run this command put the root password in okay there we go so we do user mod i think it's ag like that so, uh, and then my username there we go and then we reboot okay we're booting up now kd plasma okay i've added myself to the um sudos group okay yeah we've got a bit of transparency there okay so now let's get chrome installed um so we've got to do it as admin so we use the package manager dpkg minus i for install and it's in the downloads folder and there it is google chrome okay that's now installing it okay so it there's dependencies required uh so if it didn't install there's a way we can fix that install minus f using the apt get okay so that should install all the dependencies and then finish, finish off by installing chrome okay i think we're done let's just check There we go, Google Chrome. Right, I'll just um, sign in on this and then we're ready to carry on. Right, okay, Chrome is here and it did ask us if, if um, we want it as our default browser and I said yes. Okay, uh, let's just um, download uh, our, our stuff for dev, so we want Visual Studio Code. okay so we want the dev file while well, that's coming down there's a few more things i want to set up uh, i want it a dark theme uh, that's much better on the eyes uh, and i want to change the mouse scrolling direction i'm going to reverse it from the touchpad uh, input devices oh, no. input devices no pointer device found a oh, touchpad that's why okay so I want to um, invert scroll natural scroll if okay so there we go that's done so when I scroll up and down this that's much better it's so much more responsive than chrome os blimey really obvious okay so one thing i have noticed on here there is no sound whatsoever okay so let's go to the culture book site because there is a workaround for debian for no sound Okay, so we will go here. I'll put this link in the description. Um, installing Linux. Okay, there we go. Look, Debian versions older than Debian 12 will not support. Debian 12 requires a custom kernel. Audio script will automatically install it for you. Okay, so we need to use Git, source, which I'm going to install anyway. That's our source code management tool. Okay, and then we run this. So let's copy this okay um it doesn't say whether we need to sudo it but i i probably will so let's um we're in our home folder here let's um 
like a source code folder. Okay, so let's install a couple of basic things we need. So um, sudo at install it vim uh, curl. These are console tools. Um, we'll do our dev stuff in a bit. We'll do a minus y, so I'll just crack on and install everything and all the dependencies. Okay, that's done. So let's clone this. Let's copy this. Okay, and we'll paste it into here. Okay. So let's do sudo and we'll run setup audio. You want to install this? Yes. So this will update the kernel. Right, there we go. Um, that's that's uh, set up. So let's uh, reboot it. Okay, so it's just booting and now going back into KDE Plasma. Let's um, jump on YouTube or something and make sure we get sound. Hi, welcome to Dr. Mix. We have sound. I'm going to reconstruct Blue by FL65 because you guys asked me so many times to do it. We're going to deconstruct it using the amazing Apollo X8P by Universal go. Audio, the kind sponsors of today's video. Up okay, we have sound. Okay, all working perfectly, which is excellent um what else do we need to do right okay so before we do the developer stuff um what i need to do is i remember now there is an issue with running uh, my geforce now cloud gaming on kde plasma it does not um accept any keyboard input for some reason okay something to do with kde and how it works with the um with the, with the app so what i'm going to do is install a alternative desktop manager okay i'll install mate or mate or however you pronounce it um because uh i know for a fact that that does work and it works with everything else so the way we'll install mate is go to the terminal again Okay, sudo install task desktop minus y. Put our password in. Okay, this is going to crack on and install it. It's done pretty rapidly considering it's installing a whole sort of Windows manager. Okay, uh. Oh, DM standard. We'll do the standard one. We don't need anything light. It's uh, everything's running pretty good on this. Better than the um, OS that it was built for. Okay, that's installed. So all we need to do now is uh, log off. So sign out. Log out there. Okay, so here we just click hit this and we change that to mate. Okay, pop our password in. Okay, so let's just uh, go to the settings. Right, I've uh, redone the display mirroring. Okay, so now we have mate on here. Uh, let's um, let's sort out um, our cloud gaming, and then we'll do our dev last. So those not interested in seeing the dev environment can uh, stop the video. 
Right, I will just uh, sign in to NVIDIA here. Okay, we're signing to uh, NVIDIA. Uh, let's just set Chrome as our default browser. Uh, what's the quickest game I can fire up? Uh, let's fire up No Man's Sky. And that should sync my uh, sync last saved data. Yeah, I hate it when it does this. Every time it does it, I think, oh, it's going to destroy my save games, but uh, that should be fine. Right, it's firing up okay by the looks of things. Sounds working great. Let's just see how it performs. Okay, she's fired up. Let's just uh, move around a little bit. That's pretty smooth, isn't it? I'm using the touchpad at the moment. That's definitely playable. Not bad for a £200 laptop. No, in the cloud game servers doing all the heavy lifting, but this is perfectly playable so when I'm away my PC and I've got a decent internet connection this is how I can get online except on this game when Microsoft take uh, 10 days to uh, release an update that every other platform already has okay so we're all sorted for gaming let's quit this and the last thing we'll do is set up our developer tools so I'll say that's the last for anyone not interested in that you can um, with the video now but for anyone who's interested um, we'll do it now okay so what I want to install here is um, Python virtual environments so that I for every project I'm doing or every environment I'm doing I can install the Python packages inside the virtual environment rather than to the system it just makes it a bit tidier um, npm is node package manager that's to write for writing node in JavaScript and react and web web content GCC is the C++ or C compiler with C++ as well and ZSH or Z shell or Z shell, how do you pronounce it? That's an alternative to the default bash shell, which I'm currently using. Um, I, I like it a lot better. Um, whereas, you know, it's the Linux version of using an alternative to PowerShell. Okay, so I'll get those installed now. Okay, okay, they're, they're all installed. Um, let's do the. Auto remove that will remove anything we don't need anymore. It's an old kernel, I think. That's done. Right, so we're still using bash at the moment. So what I want to do is uh, change the shell. So let's make sure Z shell's installed. There it is. So we do C H S H change shell minus S, and we'll do instead of putting that path in, we'll just output the which z shell command and that's where it will point to put the password in okay quit that and go back in and it hasn't done it okay i think i might have to reboot in order for it to um activate the new shell so let's do that then yeah, that looks good. So we want to um, populate your ZSHRC. That's our config file with recommended configuration for our Z shell. There we go. Look at that. Looks much better. But I'm not going to stop at that. I want to use Oh My Z shell, which is much more sort of um, developer focused uh, wrapper for it, and it does make the prompt look much better. Uh, it's pretty easy to install. Okay, we just copy a command. Okay, we'll copy that. Um, go back to our console, paste that in. 
there we go this is our shell i want to config the skin for it now so let's just enlarge that a bit enlarge the font so we can see that i'll use the command text editor vim good shrc that's our shell config so i want to change the theme here to uh, no stuff okay we'll save that quit quit and then we relaunch our console and we get it um we need to install the power line fonts for this because it looks pretty garbage at the moment so i think power line install the font set for it Oh. Yeah. There we go. That's installed the fonts. We might have to change that in our um, console. Choose the right font. Let's have a look. No, it's done it for us. Okay, it's all set the right font. That's exactly how I want the shelf. Okay. So uh, Visual Studio Code is next. I did download that already, so um, um, it's there. So we'll install it in the command console. Okay, that's installed Visual Studio Code. Um, I don't know where it is programming there it is so uh, Visual Studio Code I've never used Kate there's a KDE one I think okay uh, let's install a new color theme I want um, select I like the COBOL one uh, Enterprise COBOL Okay, we'll continue. That will download and install that theme for us. There we go, we're done. Okay, let us um, make sure our dev environment works. We will set Python up and we'll set Node up. Um, the way we can do this is I will download some of my source code. Um, okay, we'll clone that. So I've got the um, Python crazy balloon clone. I've been, I started working on ages. I do need to finish that actually. So we'll copy the uh, repo address. Okay, we will go into our console. Oh, I know I've closed it. Okay, we'll go to our source code folder and we'll do the git clone as our address for my Python blue. Okay, let's set up our virtual environment for Python. So Python Python 3 minus MVN. So we'll set that to create a virtual environment and we'll do it in BEMVS general. Okay, so this is our Python virtual environment is going to be created here. We only have to do that once, and then it, all, once we activate it, all Python packages we install go inside there and not in the system. So let's open the folder where we downloaded our Python uh, source code. So it's in there in PyBalloon. Okay. Yeah, we'll trust the subfolder. Okay. So there's Python pi below, and there's the source code. Uh, let's zoom in a bit. Okay, we'll do a new terminal. Okay. Uh, this is how old it is. It's still using the master branch name instead of main. Uh, this wants to install the Python extension into VS Code. We will definitely do that. 
so it, all our syntax checking will, will work. Okay, uh, while I'm all doing that, well, once it's done, we will just tell it where our virtual environments are, which is in the VMs folder. Okay, that's set up there. Um, preferences, settings. Okay, we've just searched for VEMV. Um, Python VM folders is in the home directory and VEMVS. That's there. Um, don't know if it'll let us change it yet. We'll have to restart. Um, yeah, we'll have to restart Visual Studio OK, but well, that's not a problem. We'll just go close it there. Or oh, yeah, actually. And then reload it. It should open the last uh, source code folder we're in. There we go. That's worked out. It's Python. Click this, and there's our. We'll sort of choose our general virtual environment. Nice. I've done a requirements.txt, which is the the um, Python packages it it requires. So it set it us into our general virtual environment. So we will just do pip, which is a Python package manager, install. And we'll point it at the requirements.txt, and that should install pygame and numpy. There we go. So we can run it now. Python, um, my balloon, balloon dot pi. There we go. I don't know if the full screen will work that well. Oh yeah, it has. There we go. This is my crazy balloon clone. You can see the map's pretty much exactly the same as level one. So we're going to guide the balloon round, not hit the stars. Is our bonus. And there's a bit of a lag on the sound on the capture device, but anyway, let's see. I won't play the whole game through, but if you do hit uh, an object, look. Okay, so let's just uh, come out of that. So we know Python is all up and running. Okay, so the next one we want is our um, uh, JavaScript. I did make a Wordle clone. It's this one. Okay, so let's copy the link to the repo there and in here we will git clone into our source code folder. We'll go into Visual Studio Code and we will open folder and we will open this in source code. That's my Wordle clone. Not a very good one. Okay, so here we go. All source code is all in here. All the rest is Terraform, so I can then um, stand it up in my Amazon Web Services account and host it there. So uh, all our source code is here. Okay, uh, let's create a terminal. Uh, we, we installed npm node package manager, so we will install the dependencies. So we will npm install. Okay, that will go to this um, package.json file and install all the uh, all the dependencies. Okay, okay, that has done it. So npm run start. I think. There we go. That starts up the uh, development server. Okay, there we go. There's my Wordle clone. Now you can't see it because my camera's in the way, but I've got a 
cookie based dark mode enabler okay so there we go this is just the same as playing wordle um pop a word in there we go so that's that so all our development stuff looks like it's okay and all set up and ready um i won't go through the c plus plus stuff because it's going to be very similar to setting the other two up so this is ready to rock and roll uh last thing i will probably do but not on the videos set up the vice emulator so i can i can um, do my assembly programming stuff on here okay well that brings us to the end of the video this laptop has been reborn okay it's so much more responsive than the chrome os and uh, if you, you have a Chromebook and you're suffering the same um, pains as I was and it's compatible, I definitely recommend you do this. Also, Google are pulling the Chromium updates for older Chromebooks as well. So you'll, you'll be stuck with that and not getting the updates. OK, that brings this video to an end. I uh, hope you enjoyed it and we'll see you on the next one.